right, greetings everyone. Thank you for joining us for day one of the two day fifth annual HBC AI Advisory Council Australia Conference. My name is Brian Sparks. I'm the Director of Worldwide Operations for the Council and will be today's moderator. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank everyone at POSI and NCI Australia for their partnership and support of this conference and its co-location with this week's POSI PACER Conference, PCON 22. I'd also like to thank our media partners, HPC Wire, Inside HPC, Intersect 360, The Next Platform, and Scientific Computing for their ongoing coverage of the Council's worldwide conferences and activities. We have a robust agenda for the next three and a half hours with great topics and speakers from NCI, OSU, Microsoft Azure, at the Australian Institute for Bioengineering and Nanotechnology, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Quantum Brilliance, and POSI. I encourage everyone to ask questions via the Q&A window, and our presenters will try to answer them after their presentation. This webinar is being recorded, and the sessions will be made publicly available, including the slides, which will be available on the Council's Australia Conference website over the coming days. With that, let me introduce you all to Galad Shiner, Chairman of the HPC Advisory Council. Glad, welcome. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Brian. Um, so thanks, thanks, Brian, for uh, for moderating uh, moderating the the two days. Uh, we are we are happy to uh, continue with our collaborations with uh, NCI and Policy to uh, to run another year of the HPC Advisory Council Australian uh, Australian Conference. Uh, we had some plans to try and, and, and go back to a physical event. Unfortunately, it didn't work uh, for us this year. Um, and next year, we uh, do plan to, uh, to um, go back and do a physical event uh, uh, in Australia. Um, we have uh, um, uh, two interesting days. In, in, well, definitely in my perspective, uh, filled with different kind of topics. Items from uh, a new technology development, usage models, um, new systems, new operation models, and so forth. Um, Sean will, will essentially open uh, this day, and Mark will open uh, tomorrow. We do, uh, uh, we do appreciate feedback, by the way. So we're trying to bring... Uh, the most interesting topics, uh, as we believe. Yeah. So, so if if uh, if you have feedback, by the way, on uh, uh, topics that we should look at for next year and so forth, uh, happy to hear. So feel free to to contact uh, myself or Brian or or Gabby with uh, those suggestions. Um, I want to thank all the speakers for that going to speak today and speak tomorrow, um, and uh, we will um, try to also put uh, uh, the slides, the session slides on the web in the next uh, you know, few days after the conference. So a little bit about the council. I'm not gonna take too much time um, and kind of leave, leave more time, I'll leave more time for Sean. Um, a little bit about the council. So the council was established in 2008 with the mission to bridge the gap between HPC technology and its usage and explore new capabilities and new technologies and help to bring together uh, collaborations and foster um, education of, of HPC and AI and so forth. We have more than uh, 400 com uh, member companies, covers uh, commercial university research labs, government institute and so forth. And we continue doing uh, uh, what we've done in, in the last few years. So focusing on best practices, focusing on um, university-based competitions, the development center, the development centers that we have, and doing the conferences around the world and so forth. Um, we have uh, we we have been continued to update our small compute center, uh, the cluster centers. There's multiple system there that covers different kind of technologies. Some of them are a few years uh, ago. Some of them are, are pretty much new. And that covers a broad range of compute elements, uh, accelerators, uh, networking. Recently, we added capabilities of smart NICs and DPUs and so forth. Uh, the center is, uh, is being used for us, uh, for our research, uh, that results in generating a lot of best practices, application best practices. Uh, we also provide uh, remote access for, for folks that wants to explore 
the different technologies, doing the own development, testing, and so forth. And as part of uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the the advantages that we provide to our members. Um, we continue to update the application best practices. Uh, in the last three months, more or less, we have done uh, around 10 updates of applications and workloads on uh, newer systems and explore uh, new items and so forth. Everything is posted on the cluster, on the, on the council website, under best practices, and you're more than welcome to check it out. Um, another important mission of the council is the uh, student cluster competitions. So we're managing a couple of those, uh, managing the annual uh, ISC student cluster competition that uh, happens around June. Um, and then this year we've done it uh, split, part was hybrid, uh, which was hybrid, part was uh, virtual um, and part was physical in Germany as part of the ISC conference. Uh, there is the, the annual APAC competition uh, that actually runs now. And uh, I'd like to thank NCI again for contributing uh, their system for this competition so that the student teams can use it as part of their uh, work, as part of their mission. There are also two uh, 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 programming or uh, uh, a summer series uh, workshops that we're doing. One of them is uh, in, in APAC, which focuses around RDMA programming, uh, as well ending with a, a, a hackathon around that. Um, and we're also taking part of the Stanford uh, uh, summer, uh, summer, summer workshops uh, as well. So happy to do that. Uh, it's great to help universities to get more uh, information, more knowledge, more capabilities around HPC. Great working with students and actually following them and see um, what they managed to do that, not, not, not just for the competition itself, but later on as they start their, their, their career. Um, the conference is, uh, is also an important part of what we do, trying to bring together uh, different kind of topics, different kind of discussions, and so forth. So we're doing um, around seven uh, around uh, around the globe annually. Um, so now we, we're 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 starting the Australia conference. Uh, we have two coming up. Uh, one in late late October, late this month uh, in in the UK, which is uh, uh, which also includes, by the way. In hackathon before that around smart NICs and and DPUs, so that's information on on the on the website. Uh, the hackathon is not limited to UK, so the hackathon is actually open to everyone uh, around the world. The hackathon includes two days of training on how to utilize um, those elements, and then there is a, a few days of hackathon, which followed by the the UK conference. Um, and in November we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna run the China conference. And again, going back uh, early next year to Japan and and the rest of uh, of the conferences, we're moving back to do more physical events. Um, Japan conference might be still virtual, uh, but the next one uh, in Switzerland is gonna be physical event and so forth. So uh, more information about uh, what we do, obviously you can find on on the website. The best practices, the next events, uh, the hackathons, uh, how to access the cluster center, um, and other other uh, important information, I guess. Um, also, you can find there the presentations and sessions from previous conferences. And uh, shortly after this conference, we'll also post the uh, presentations of this conference. Um, you can join our LinkedIn, LinkedIn group, of course, and if you need to access us, uh, you can definitely use the email. Um, so with that, uh, again, I'd like to thank all the speakers, um, the media coverage, uh, Brian and Gabby for managing managing the event uh, and the collaboration with NCI and, and POSI. So thank you very, very much, John. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, and looking forward for uh, the session uh, in the next two days. Great. Thank you, Galad. All right. Our next presentation is going to come from NCI Director Sean Smith. Okay.
Okay, uh, thanks Gilad for the um, in introduction to the uh, HPC AI and uh, the conference and so forth, uh, and Brian for, and uh, Gabriella for the technical help. Uh, so um, the, the title for my presentation today is uh, Hyperconverged Infrastructure for HPC, Cloud AI Simulations Visualization uh, All on One System. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to give you an introduction to a, a range of different uh, platforms and capabilities that we are integrating at NCI. Um, it is a, uh, it's a, um, you know, a work in motion, as it were, uh, and uh, we've come quite a long way in the last several years. Still, some ways to go, but I'd like to show you where we're at currently. Um, before I do that, let me uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the area where we are located here at NCI uh, on the ANU campus in ACT. Uh, and that's the Nullawal people, uh, and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, and what you are seeing here actually is two signature artworks which we had, uh, which we had um, created um, on the left hand side from uh, Lenice Church, uh, which is this, the blue one, the signature artwork for our Guardi supercomputer. Uh, and then on the right hand, uh, created by Anthony Best, uh, both uh, local indigenous artists, obviously. Um, and uh, that is the signature artwork for our, our shoulder cloud facility called Niren, uh, meaning edge in the, in the Wiradjuri language. Gadi and Nanawal languages to search for. Uh, okay, so um, no surprises here. Uh, a quick location check. Uh, <clears throat> NCI, as I said, is, a, is in, in Canberra ACT on the, on the beautiful campus of the Australian National University. Um, and uh, we work collaboratively in many different uh, facets with our, our sister facilities, uh, Pawsey out in Perth and NASI across in New Zealand. Uh, <clears throat> NCI is uh, a world-class supercomputing and data science hub. Um, we uh, provide high-performance computing, uh, cloud computing, uh, data storage and services. Uh, we have lots and lots and lots of users, over 8,000 um, uh, in the most recent count. And those users comprise of, um, uh, very many of them are eager research students across, in, you know, within excellent research groups at universities across the country. Um, also research teams uh, within the major, um, the major uh, government agencies uh, who uh, engage with us, the CSIRO, uh, which is the Australian equivalent of a national laboratory, um, the uh, Bureau of Meteorology, uh, and Geoscience Australia uh, are three agencies who have very heavy uh, investment and engagement with NCI and, and its platforms. Uh, we have a, a, a modest amount of industry partnerships, um, which mainly are at the SME kind of uh, scale. And um, those engagements, I, I, given uh, the current flags that are being uh, uh, shown by federal government, I could see the industry engagement wrapping up uh, in the coming years because there's an increasing focus on translational research here in Australia, as indeed I'm sure in, in, in many other countries as well. Um, many, in fact, probably most of the researchers working on our systems have research grants from the major national grant agencies like uh, the Australian Research Council or the National Health and Medical Research Council. And so in that respect, uh, we offer the complementary underpinning capability in computing data, which allows them to realize what they have uh, projected that they want to do when they make their grant applications. Um, NCI uh, comprises uh, not only, we've, we've got the teams who, live, who keep the hardware running and keep the platforms running um, and to maintain them appropriately, but we also have teams who do deep dive uh, collaboration on scientific codes to help them optimize for optimal running on our specific um, uh, computing platforms, because there are obviously always wrinkles that go with any specific architecture. Uh, and so we have a lot of collaborative work in that space as well, which comprises another significant part of our, of our staffing. Um, somewhere north of a billion compute hours per year, 1.3 I think is the current number on our Gaudi supercomputer, uh, and that will double uh, in the coming months as we do a mid-cycle uplift on our system. Uh, NCI has quite deliberately a heterogeneous uh, uh, capacity 
across GPUs and CPUs. Uh, when we launched Guardi, the current machine, uh, we had um, about uh, one third of the throughput capacity was on GPUs and two thirds on CPUs. Uh, and uh, that will no doubt adapt moving forwards uh, and it gets adapted depending on how we read the demands and the capabilities of the major codes that run on our, on our facility from our major users. Um, we have a lot of storage, over 100 petabytes currently and growing, um, and a significant amount of that is uh, highly curated national data collections, which serve as multiple community, communities across multiple research domains, and obviously the supercomputing. So um, I think I've already summarized that we service a very wide range of workloads uh, across different sorts of organizations, and it goes from very fundamental uh, cutting edge research that gets done in individual research groups in the universities, uh, right out into industry engagement, uh, and of course in the middle strategic and applied uh, activities. Um, and uh, the activities in the middle space here are, are, are in many respects driven with our engagement with the government agencies that I mentioned. Uh, NCI traditionally has a very heavy footprint in uh, supporting uh, research in climate and weather uh, and geospatial, of course, very large um, um, geospatial in, uh, uh, imaging data sets um, for, for many different communities to access and use. Um, okay, so this is a slide which basically sketches out the sorts of integration and convergent infrastructure that I wanted to touch on today. Uh, and. Uh, it starts out at the, uh, at the top there indicating the two major compute platforms, uh, the Guardi supercomputer and uh, Niren cloud, uh, um, cloud platform. Um, Guardi, I should say, uh, as I've mentioned already, is the, uh, is the, the new computer that was launched in 2020. Uh, uh, Niren currently is a repurposing of our previous super, supercomputer, uh, uh, Raijin in order to provide that shoulder capacity at, somewhat le at, a, at a somewhat lower level of intensity, obviously, uh, for the workloads that run on it, uh, which, you know, runs just fine on the somewhat older, older um, uh, platform that was Raijin. Um, we have uh, uh, connections into global file systems, particularly in geospatial and climate and weather domains, um, and uh, national data collections, which require continual refreshing and curation uh, uh, in order that they can be used and updated appropriately. Uh, we have a particular focus on, enable, on enabling specialized data analysis uh, environments, uh, which are mostly supported off VMs and off our cloud. Um, but increasingly also, uh, we are moving towards enabling um, real-time access into the, into the Guardi, into, into parts of the Guardi platform in order to do numerically intensive uh, on-demand activities such as visualizations uh, and I'll show a little more of uh, that sort of work a bit later. Uh, and we are also increasingly um, becoming engaged in supporting genomics activities uh, in computational medicine across uh, uh, numerous sectors around the country. And that involves, um, that involves uh, collaboration with infrastructure organizations uh, such as BioPlatforms Australia, uh, Australian BioCommons uh, and so forth. And I'll touch on that a little later as well. So I'm just going to now progressively walk through these different features that I've pointed out on this slide and give you a little bit, a little bit more information uh, about those. So, okay, uh, here we are with uh, the Guardi and uh, Niren compute platforms. Uh, Guardi um, uh, is to date Australia's fastest research computer, uh, supercomputer that will. That, uh, we clocked it at 9.26 petaflops just after New Year 2020. Um, and uh, that will remain the case for a short space of probably a month or two, I think, until Pawsey's uh, fabulous new Sotonix machine gets fully stood up uh, and launched. And we're really looking forward to the huge impact that that machine is going to have as the next jump in capability for the Australian research sector. And uh, no doubt, um, uh, uh, Marchie and also Mark will be telling you more about that uh, in their presentations a little bit later today and tomorrow. Uh, so Guardi comprises of about 180,000 compute cores, um, about 150,000 of those are Intel Cascade Lake, 
uh, we did keep 30,000 of our previous mid-cycle upgrade hardware and kept it in Guardi, uh, but that will probably roll off back into cloud once we do our mid-cycle bump in a few months' time. Uh, and uh, the GPU component, which I mentioned was about 30%-ish of our throughput on Guardi, uh, was at the time at the NVIDIA V100s, uh, and uh, they've served us well. Uh, we'll do a bump on the GPU side as well, that again will double that capacity uh, sometime in the first half of uh, 2023, depending on obviously procurement timelines and so forth. Uh, it's all hooked up with um, fast and uh, uh network in order to facilitate high um, high scaling uh, and numerically intense computational effort. Uh, Gadi, interestingly enough, it, it debuted um, in, let me think, ISC 2020 uh, at number 24 uh, on the global top 500. Um, and the reason I say interestingly is because somewhat coincidentally, 24 is exactly where Raijin had landed uh, about eight years earlier, six, seven, eight years earlier, when, when the previous supercomputer was launched. Uh, so they both landed at the same place. Um, Gadi cost about three times more than what Raijin did back in the day, uh, which may be in part as a bit of inflation, but also in part it's a reflection that all countries actually, all of the advanced economies across the globe are ramping up their investment uh, because they can see the criticality of high performance computing and data platforms for um, advancing not just the university uh, research sector, but, but uh, increasingly the economy and industry more broadly, uh, uh, health sector and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's really become uh, this space in uh, HPCD uh, is becoming an underpinning infrastructure for for an enormously wide range of what a country and what an advanced economy needs to keep uh, moving forwards. Uh, in Australia, we have um, been undertaking over the past 18 months uh, a strategic um, government-sponsored roadmap development for research infrastructure over the next decade. Uh, and it, it has become very apparent that the uh, tier one supercomputing and also the uh, data um, the data uh, support um, uh, infrastructure writ large, which in Australia is called ARDC. Um, these have become platform underpinning for almost the entire research infrastructure, infrastructure sector. Uh, and as such, the debate around how to manage the investment for that is now reaching right across government. Uh, and. Um, is you know it's sort of a, a, a whole of government activity in many respects, um, and we hope that, that that will become more integrated uh, in terms of road mapping going forwards um, as a part of this process that's being sponsored by federal government currently. Uh, as mentioned, the Agadi was um, about seven times faster than its predecessor Raijin, uh, and um, uh, uh, again, as I said, that will probably double again uh, in the coming months once we get our next bump. Um, the new CPUs we're putting in will be uh, Sapphire Rapids um, and, and um, will facilitate an, an, an increase in our capacity in that way or of that, of that magnitude. Uh, I have mentioned the background to the NIRIN um, research cloud. It's currently running at around 20,000 cores, uh, uh, Intel Sandy Bridge and Broadwell. Um, it has a, a mix of zones depending on the on the um, utilization demand that we have from different communities, uh, and uh, we also have uh, specific services. For example, in um, in uh, 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 computational bioinformatics, there is a platform called Galaxy Australia, which is uh, sponsored by uh, BioPlatforms Australia and the uh, ARDC. The Australian BioCommons uh, is the name of that consortium. Uh, and that has no, a few nodes across the country, including nodes at both NCI and uh, at PAUSI, which help that community to get access to a, a, a versatile array of bioinformatics tools. Uh, and um, NIRIN helps to underpin that capacity as well. Um, so uh, we have a, a software stack on, on top of NIRIN, which we call the Australian Research Environment. Uh, it utilizes open on demand, uh, which uh, I think it comes out of Ohio by, re by recollection. It's an open source platform for uh, a flexible uh, GUI interface into cloud architecture. 
Uh, and so we've used that as one of the tools to, uh, to build that research environment. And it's progressive, progressively becoming uh, more and more flexible to be able to support a wider range of uh, cloud-based interface and analytics of the big computer and the big data that we've got uh, in Guardi. So it's very much viewed, uh, the cloud is very much viewed as um, a front end and an interface into the big machine so that users can find readily the tools that they like to access in order to be able to get the best they can out of the big compute platform Guardi. Okay, um, I've, this next slide is just giving you a little bit of further information around the, um, uh, the file systems and national data collections uh, that NCI runs. So, uh, <clears throat> um, it's interestingly, I'm sitting currently in, in, in the NCI building and um, our, our, the data center where the computers, where the storage and where the Guardi supercomputer reside is upstairs uh, in this building. And um, when I started as director in 2018 if, and walked up to see the, uh, the data center up there, it was, it was cram, cram packed full. Um, nowadays, if you walk up there, there's a big empty space in the middle. And that's because uh, the, um, the supercomputers are getting heavier and, and uh, more powerful. And so for our facility here, currently the bottleneck is no longer space, it's power coming into the facility. Uh, and so as a part of the mid-cycle upgrade that I mentioned, quite a significant amount of investment in that is actually building additional power and cooling infrastructure so that we can overcome that bottleneck and facilitate future development of capacity on our system. Um, upstairs then is the Guardi machine itself, uh, and it's, it's tightly connected to the 100, 100 plus petabytes of high performance spinning disk storage, uh, which encompasses both project data specific to individual projects, but also uh, the curated national data collections that I had mentioned. Um, and so uh, part of the reason for that co-location wouldn't be any surprise to much of this audience I know. Uh, and it's simply the fact that when you get to a certain scale of data that you're trying to access and read and process and do analytics on, uh, it becomes um, not efficient, if indeed possible at all, uh, to shift that data. And so the paradigm somewhat changes and you need to be able to push your, push your request in your analytics job up to NCI here and then let it hit the, the fast file systems, do the analysis and then pull the results back to wherever you happen to be. Um, which is why uh, we're building this interoperable data compute and cloud uh, ecosystem in order to facilitate that paradigm actually being working and working efficiently and working well. And I'll talk more a little bit later on further efforts that we're developing currently to further enhance interoperability between this part of the research ecosystem and the broader HPCD ecosystem uh, in Australia and indeed internationally. Okay, uh, so that's our data collections uh, and uh, uh, the criticality of having big compute and big data sitting side by side. Um, if I move on from there, excuse me just a second. So um, this slide is talking about the specialized data analysis environments um, that I touched on briefly earlier. Uh, and so we've worked a lot in recent years on designing and set up, setting up specialized environments for managing these analytics workflows. Um, we're doing that for a range of different disciplines, uh, including uh, bioinformatics and genomics, uh, geophysics, uh, visualization services, I'll touch on in a second, uh, climate and weather, uh, and we also have um, quantum computing, uh, um, quantum computing simulation, shall we say, environment uh, here at NCI, um, which allows uh, uh, researchers from that community to trial new um, new algorithms uh, and to mimic, if you will, the quantum computer on the classical computer. And I think you're hearing later today from um, Maciej Satowski at, at Pawsey, if I saw correctly on the, uh, on the summary of talks that Gilad showed us. Uh, and I think he's going to touch on a, a, actually a, a physical demo uh, quantum computing system that Pawsey are building in uh, into their data center, which is really exciting. Uh, so stay online to hear more about that later. Uh, 
<clears throat> so we work hard on um, pre-installing and optimizing the software so that it can run efficiently on uh, both our cloud and when necessary on uh, in a real-time sense on the uh, on the Guardian machine. Um, and that's providing more flexibility for uh, data analysis uh, on our system. We we had as we were as we were planning the build out of the cloud uh, uh, here at NCI, we did some consultation across the community, and we found actually a number of different modes by which scientists felt they would need to come in on, and utilize that. Uh, some of them are doing lower intensity uh, analytics work, which sits very comfortably on the cloud and simply needs to reach across to the uh, the big data systems to, to access the data appropriately. But the compute jobs can run effectively on the cloud uh, given its its capabilities. There are other, um, uh, what would you say, he really heavy duty users who for whom the data analytics work itself has become so intensive that they have no other recourse than actually to push that straight across onto the big compute engine uh, and do the analytics on Guardi and then pull results back uh, for any post-processing as needed uh, on the cloud. So, you know, a range of different modes and mechanisms of getting this kind of analysis done, depending on the users and the intensity of the jobs they have to run. Um, <clears throat> other, uh, another sort of uh, um, analytics framework that we're, that we're working very intensively to develop currently is obviously and appropriate for the title of this conference is uh, machine learning and AI platforms. Uh, and so we've got a, a, an organization wide focus team currently working on building out uh, NCI AI uh, and NCI AI facilitating platform uh, such that um, uh, very intensive model training on large, on very large data sets can be undertaken on the large guardian machine. Uh, uh, whereas once models are trained appropriately and ready to go, then the inferencing can often be done on the cloud, uh, being somewhat less numerically intensive. Um, the capacity that we also offer is the ability to, to regularly re retrain the models if the underlying data sets themselves are changing. Uh, and that is, um, as I understand, can, can, often, can often be the case depending on the particular domain uh, uh, that you're working in. So that's an increasingly uh, intense focus across our whole organization is building those platforms and a flexible capability to both train and then inference uh, in the AI context. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, visualization earlier on, uh, and um, I am not going to show you this particular one, uh, we, which is um, dealing with a heat wave in Sydney uh, last year. You can follow that that link uh, to a YouTube channel, which has it's a five minute uh, video which was created um, re relating to uh, real time analysis and visualization of the uh, uh, sensor and environmental data around Sydney during that heat wave. Um, another one which I'll show you here. Next slide, if it's going to move on for me, please. Here it is, and it started already. This is a uh, this is not real satellite imaging. It's 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 rendered visualization uh, from from numerical data, which is uh, uh, the best effort that could be done on the Gaudi machine to simulate tropical cyclone Debbie at a 400 meter resolution. Uh, that was undertaken by Christian Yakov and colleagues on Gaudi when it was just launched in 2020. Uh, and this was I, I think this was what we call a stress a stress testing project where we allowed some of our heaviest users to hit the machine as hard as they could in its early month or two and see if they could break it. Um, uh, and so they had some pretty challenging projects they ran and this was one of them. So this is visualization off the back end of that simulation. So this itself, uh, this kind of work itself is done um, in house, if you will, by our very expert uh, visual visualization team. Uh, we've got a uh, a team who, who spend quite significant amounts of time on, on intensive projects uh, to lift up very extremely high quality and quite numerically demanding visualizations such as you see here. But what we're also doing currently then, uh, as I had sort of mentioned, was when I talked about real time uh, visualization on parts of the Guardi machine, the, point, the, 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 the concept there is to corral a certain level of capacity on that machine which can facilitate numerically intense 
uh, visualization activity. But it, it, that can be done then by users in our community who pretty much know what they're doing uh, and they need to come in and get it done when they need it uh, rather than submitting to batch queue. Uh, and so we're, we're now enabling that sort of capability for a broader range of visualization scientists who know what they're doing and, and they don't need to get it done by our people. They can come in and actually do it themselves uh, you know, with robust industry uh, grade software. Okay, uh, so I think I'm coming towards the, the end of my slides. Uh, I wanted to touch finally here on um, things that we're doing in genomics space. Uh, NCI has been dipping its feet into the genomics area for a few years now uh, through a collaboration with our colleagues at the Garvin Institute uh, in Sydney. Uh, and we have just this year published uh, um, a curated, what's currently I think is the largest uh, uh, collection medical uh, medical uh, genome reference bank um, from the Garvin, uh, and um, we've facilitated uh, reprocessing of the of the genomic the whole genome data sets uh, on a regular basis to keep them fresh and keep them curated and updated with the appropriate tagging, uh, which is again a numerically intensive operation that's best done uh, right next to the supercomputer. Uh, so. We've been building that capacity for some while uh, with uh, uh, Garvin. Uh, and uh, recently, we've become engaged in um, a range of, a somewhat broader range of genomics activity. Uh, we're currently standing up a program in, in uh, cancer genomics clinical trialing, um, in which we collaborate with the not for profit uh, organization Omico uh, in Sydney. Uh, which is doing clinical trialing and we're look, helping them with the data, uh, uh, facilitating uh, management of the data sets on the back end of that operations. It's a really exciting development uh, for Australia in the cancer space. Um, so a range of things that we are continuing to, to develop uh, and are building the capacity for activity in this, in this uh, genomics and personalized medicine space. Okay. Uh, so. My last couple of slides really just try to re-summarize this concept of, of hyper-integrated infrastructure. Uh, and this one is looking at the different sorts of uh, capabilities that I've talked about so far today uh, and that we are integrating on our supercomputer, our, our cloud and our VMs, um, in, incorporating high-performance compute, uh, the cloud uh, platform. Uh, the curated national data collections, uh, the uh, vis visualization services, uh, optimized software and AI ML technologies. And so, uh, as I said, you know, it's, this is a work in progress, uh, but we've made a lot of progress in last, in recent years, uh, and that progress is, is accelerating as, as we move forwards. Uh, so we really look forward to uh, delivering this kind of integrated capacity for the research uh, sector um, in, in increasingly easy and flexible ways uh, going forwards. And um, the final slide is, is really about a different kind of, of integration. It's not so much integration within NCI per se and within the components of our ecosystem here at the ANU. Uh, it's integration between NCI and the other parts of the HPCD ecosystem. Uh, uh, in Australia and internationally. And that involves the ongoing collaboration work that we have running with uh, our, our colleagues across at the Pawsey Centre in Perth, which um, is, a, is, is an ongoing priority for us to continue developing that effective interoperability uh, between ourselves and the other tier one facility, Pawsey, here in Australia. Uh, with the, the, um, the large government agencies uh, that I mentioned earlier on, who have um, a very heavy investment of their collab <coughs> of their research capacity in the HPC space uh, and data with, at, at, on the NCI platforms, also facilitating collaboration between uh, the government agency scientists and the um, cognate scientists out there in the university research sector uh, in those big areas such as climate and weather. Uh, and the geospatial sciences. Uh, engagement with international sister facilities. And so um, NCI is an active player within the uh, ADAC uh, uh, accelerated data and analytics uh, uh, um, in, uh, and, and 
ADAC, Accelerated Data uh, Analytics and Computing uh, Institute, which is headed out of ORNL and encompasses uh, a number of, of the largest um, tier one facilities uh, around the globe. Uh, we work closely with our regional partners I mentioned earlier, PAWSI, uh, NC and NESI across in New Zealand, and also the uh, NSCC in Singapore. Uh, and uh, NCI has had very close and, and increasingly um, fertile mutual support and collaborations with, our, with the Singapore facility um, that we look to continue. Um, collaborations with tier two facilities in country, uh, um, such as the uh, uh, ARDC Nectar Cloud nodes, uh, and uh, I mentioned earlier the, the uh, Bioinformatics Galaxy nodes, uh, um, QI, uh, uh, QCI uh, up in Queensland, the Queensland uh, uh, Tier 2 facility for computing data, and so on. Um, I mentioned already other national research infrastructure projects uh, that we collaborate heavily with, in, in particularly in data service space. And then finally, the commercial cloud, obviously, uh, and we've got active projects running currently both with Google and with Amazon, uh, uh, potentially with, with Azure as well, in terms of looking at constructive and synergistic modes by which uh, um, we can fertilize two-way uh, exchange of workflows between ourselves and the commercial providers. Uh, and there are a number of really, really constructive use cases that we've identified by which uh, this can actually do great things. Uh, not only for, for our ability, um, it, it potentially allows uh, NCI to have a wider range of software platforms that can access our data sets uh, by having that interoperability with our, our hyperscale uh, um, partners, as it were. Um, it allows potentially burst on compute, uh, uh, which happens occasionally and as a big job comes in the door. Uh, potentially failover capacity if we go down for maintenance and there are critical services that need to keep running. These are all interesting ways in which we and uh, um, the, our hyperscaler partners can actually mutually support. And we, of course, then offer a gateway also for them uh, to engage with the broader research sector in ways that um, it's not so easy for them to do directly. Uh, uh, so these are also looking at looking quite interesting and really with a lot of potential, I think, for advancing the ecosystem at large. With that, I'm going to stop. And um, there's probably a few minutes left, I think, maybe if there are any questions out there. Thank you.